Hello, so I'm here at the Cambodian Association of Illinois. And I'm about to get a, a tour of the place. This is a bong. Introduce yourself, bong. Um, Annette, I'm the youth program director here. Okay. She's going to take us on a tour, so. Um, All right, let's go. Let's check it out. All right. Usually a tour is about 45 minutes. Oh, really? Maybe about five minutes. No, it's quick one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do the short one first. Yeah. So, anyone visiting Chicago, what's the address? Drop the hat. We are at 2831 West Lawrence. Okay, I'll have it in the description too. Oh wow, it's a whole so museum in here. We are representing everything and anything. I'll get that. Um, as you can see, everything around our building um, has some significant meaning related to Cambodian cultures, especially the arts. As you know, uh, we've lost a lot of the cultures and a lot of artists. Um, so we're trying to revive and promote um, what was almost appropriate under the Khmer Rouge and wow. the museum. Um, and then the lights for you real quick. Oh, check it out. This is a whole museum, huh? Oh my lord. Wasn't expecting this at all. Wow. Yeah, so um, this is the, um, this museum is the only museum in the country outside of Cambodia. Um, the only one in the United States, as far as we know. Um, the museum was established in 2004. Um, this is our fourth major exhibition um, titled Remembering the Killing Fields. So um, codes that you see in these panels, these are the actual codes of the survivors that we collected the stories, um, those that are living in Illinois. And the first panel that you see here, these are just um, the, f um, we actually interviewed 50 survivors. And among those 50 survivors, we selected these four individuals and one couple. And the stories and code is being displayed on these panels. Wow, that's amazing. Yep. So these are from these Chicago locals now, they live here? Uh, are these survivors? Yeah, these are the survivors. Yeah. Wow. Um, he's our former um, staff, uh, the couple here. Um, she just recently passed away a few months ago. Um, but then he's currently on a senior staff. Um, he used to serve as a president, uh, board of the presidents. And that's my mother. And also, of course, um, you have the uh, Khmer text, you know, for the elderly who don't don't have uh, literacies in English to be able to kind of uh, relate to reading that in the native writing. It's mm -hmm. a lot of good information for people that want to learn about the culture. So mainly this exhibit, we don't want to really highlight the events, but more so um, to acknowledge um, the stories of the survivors because every story is very different and every story is very unique. Um, so that's kind of really our purpose is um, that, you know, the space um, is, to, is to provide an opportunity for um, the dialogues and conversations, um, especially connecting with the older generations and then the younger generation. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. People can, you know, read about the facts. They can find it online, and there's a lot of resources available for them. Um, but what what we want to capture is the stories of the survivors. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this. This is this is very detailed. That's beautiful. Wow. We have some artifacts that kind of symbolize the tools, the agricultural tools that was used during the Khmer Rouge. Um, I think. Some of them were the originals that we were able to um, get from Cambodia. For example, like this cooking pot here. Wow. It was the original that was made in the Khmer regime. Check that out. Wow. Yeah. I'll let you do the B-roll. That's fine, yeah. Um, is this, um, what's the name of this place? Like this uh, National Museum. Cambodian Heritage Museum and Killing Field Memorial. It's made to kind of serve as an educational institution. Um, and Are you, you're like the only one, right, in, in, in the U.S.? Uh, well, this museum is the only one in the U.S. Yeah. Good to know. That's a yeah. fun fact. And so it's in Chicago, so anyone comes to visit Chicago and want to learn more about Cambodian history, this is the place. Wow. Yeah. Have you ever been to Cambodia yourself? No. Yeah. I want to. I just. I just gotta take care of my passport. That situation. Yeah, yeah. So like, this is a, uh, this is actually the uh, uh, the shackle from the prison cell S twenty one. 
um, F21 and Jack A, it's the killing field sites. Wow. Um, they're still remaining in Cambodia and, you know, as a, a tourist his, historical uh, place that people can go and um, like an actual testimonies as to, you know, uh, the living uh, place. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Um, mm -hmm. video. Yeah, so this is kind of just an image of the prison cell. It's the mm -hmm. torture. Yep. Tools and we do have uh, some of the original uh, painting um, from the surviving artists. So um, there's uh, this popular painting uh, was made by an artist named Van Matt, and he was also one of the survivors of S21. Um, and he passed away in 2011, just like 10 days before we had the opening of this uh, exhibit. Yeah, so these. So uh, you made those? Yeah, these are the uh, replica of his drawing, and we have some of the original um, drawings of his as well. It's collection. And then he, and this section here kind of gives a background information about the artist. Wow. Interesting. And then this space here will lead you to our uh, permanent killing fields memorial. Oh. So this is the memorial, the names? This is the memorial, yeah. The names of the victims? Um, yeah, so uh, the memorial has 80 panels and each panel represents 2,500 names. So that's kind of equivalent to 2 million names, um, kind of the um, estimated uh, number of people that were killed uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime. And um, the front panels are etched, and these are the names of those family, surviving family members who live here in the States. Um, and they wanted to um, remember those who were um, killed, you know, whether it was by execution, starvation, illnesses, or overworked. Um, this space served as kind of like a, you know, a testament um, hmm. to, to the surviving families. And also, it's being utilized a lot by the survivors themselves. You know, we call this memorial a living memorial, where people can come and they bring fresh flowers, they place on the memorials, they pray. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it's a kind of a inviting space um, where they're able to kind of connect themselves into the space. Wow. Yeah. So we are currently in the process of. Um, collecting more names and this is something that museum is an ongoing project of the museum so we encourage any Cambodian families um, who have family members who lost, who were killed during that time um, to you know just go online uh, commemorate their their families and submit names um, we are hoping to etch the second panels um, by next year of 2019 so then we will have another reopening of the museum so wow. So we don't just have um, family who lives in Illinois, but then there's also other families who's from Lake Lowe, from California, from a few other states when we were um, initially in the planning phases. Uh, first we wanted to just limit it to, um, Illinois. to Illinois resident, but then we realized, you know, the space, we wanted to be more inviting nationwide. and nationwide. So yeah, so we invite any Cambodian uh, to... I did not know. I think yeah. I've... It might have, it might have, um, I think someone posted about it, but I, mm -hmm. I, I like totally yeah. don't remember. I like just like it's coming back to me to play. Yeah. Might have been me. So that's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And every year on April 17, we always do a commemoration day of remembrance. Um, I think this uh, last, I think the first year we did a candlelight visuals with, um, yeah, with the oh, yeah. It's, uh, other states as well. So. Wow. Hopefully I'll come back in Chicago for come on here. Johnny, you want me to add it? Yeah, I got you. Well, this my New Year's mainly like indoor. We don't have due to the weather and stuff, you know. Oh yeah, I heard it's still winter in March. Wow. And we have a library, um, which we have collections of books. Just anything related to Cambodia. Um, right now, it's also kind of library slash um, storage for uh, equipment. Uh, we have we provide a cultural programs. Uh, we teach us Cambodian dance, music, and language um, on Saturdays. It's like an all-day cultural uh, activities that we have here, 
And uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, musicians and artists in residence, Punisa Po, which you're going to meet later. Um, she is considered to be one of the youngest um, uh, Pinpeard uh, musicians uh, from Cambodia. So um, she was able to kind of, now she joined us on the staff and she teaches uh, these um, Pinpeard music ensembles to the younger generations and they kind of pass along the torch. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Beautiful museum. Are you familiar with Pete Pin? Yeah, he's my yeah, friend. Yeah, he lives in Brooklyn. We have, we have a few collaboration. Um, shout uh, out to Pete Pin. Shout out to Pete Pin. We gotta miss him. <laughs> that was one of the participant on his first uh, workshop. We did a uh, I am Kmai, oh. I am Kmai project. Yeah, so we had two installation of his uh, exhibit, and that was kind of like a temporary uh, mobile exhibit that we have partnership with Pete Pin. Yeah, wow. so we're, we're up to collaboration with other um, artists as well. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of beautiful artwork here. Wow. Yeah, usually towards the end of the tour, um, Lisa will perform uh, uh, traditional Cambodian music. Um, as a way for people to remember about the culture. Oh, we're just right here, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. like a, they get the full experience yeah. from the music to the dance. Yeah. Beautiful statue. I think in uh, three, oh. two more weeks, um, we're having a, an event with one of the uh, ceramics. He's a ceramist artist from Lowell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, the only, uh, he's one of the three ceramist artists alive. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. It's going to be at that place. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Chicago. Well, that was a quick tour of the five minute version or <laughs> 10 minute version. Usually the tours run 45 minutes, it's very detailed. And thank you, Wong, for uh, giving me you're this welcome. tour. Yep, you're welcome. Chicago, what you learn? the only Cambodian killing film museum. So if you guys in Chicago, make sure you stop by here and, you know, check it out. <laughs>